everyone. Welcome to the North and Artist Conversation. My name is Mark Kelly. I am your host. Um, sitting behind the uh, computer driving uh, all of this today is a uh, wonderful producer, Andrew. Uh, producer Andrew, give yourself a round of applause. There you go. Gave himself a golf clap. Good work. Um, man, yeah, it's, it's uh, what are we? We're in March now. We're in March. Starting to see some sunshine, some great weather. It's been really, really nice. Um well, Andrew's gone like that, and I will say, look, it's been better than the flooding. All I'm going to say is you keep jinxing it. I do keep jinxing it. So how about, how about I say this? It's been March, and we've had some weather. That sounds a lot better. I've I've gotten the thumbs up. I'm going to switch to my 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 camera now. Um, so today's guest, Maggie Coco, was absolutely amazing. You know, we had we tried getting her on last year, couldn't quite get the timing right. Um, we reached out to her again at the start of this year and said, "Hey, look, we'd we'd still really like you on." Um, and she said, "Cool, this is my availability." You know, what what are some of the dates that work with you? And I think I messaged her uh, or Marina, sorry, messaged her a couple of days ago and said, "All right, Wednesday the first And she said, "Yep, done." And she was here, and Maggie was uh, super amazing. I mentioned in the podcast she has actually spent pretty much the entire like last twenty four hours um, in a studio recording an album, um, or, or you know, not not doing a whole album, but she's been in a recording studio doing some recording for an album. And you know, um, we had a chat beforehand, and we're just talking. And she said, "Yeah, I've had like an hour and a half sleep," and then she she still wanted to commit to the podcast, so came in, sat down. And was amazing, for for lack of a better word. You know, we get some of those guests that you, you know, I'd never met Maggie, she'd never met me, but we just, we got on really, really well, and she shares some amazing stories, including a story that could only happen in Whangarei. It really is a Whangarei story, and it's... um. You know, it's it's filled with highs and lows, and you know some some dark moments. But uh, you know, ultimately, it ends up incredibly well. And she's so articulate and so super cool. So I tell you what, how about I stop talking and we start watching or listening? Uh, let's sit down and have a conversation with Maggie Coco. Sure. Is it often or often? Oh, off. Well, so if you're slack, it's often. Mm. If you speak English as your first language, no, I'm kidding. If you just, it's often. Okay, because I, I'm, I, like, I do, I, I, um, I suppose I, I used to be a little bit more of a pedant when it came to a these things. A little bit more what? Of a pedant, pedantic. All right. Did you say a boot? Uh, did I? You did. Oh. Okay. <laughs> okay. No. So, what part of Canada are you from? <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm, I'm I'm from Michigan and okay. like very near it's Canada. Quite close so to I'm the border. Sure yeah. There's a you yeah. know like I know what Timmy Hose is and all that. Yeah. Uh, uh, Tim Hortons. Yes. yes. Good. Tim Hortons. They do donuts. Yeah. Good. Uh, I believe they're director Kevin Smith's favorite donuts in the whole world. Before oh. he went vegan. Oh. Yeah. Oh no. Yes. And has has Tim Hortons not gone the extra mile I and don't believe made a vegan donut I just for him? Don't believe they've catered to Kevin Smith. Oh. I know Maggie yeah. Coco. Yeah, he did. He had a heart attack. Oh. On stage. Oh. In front of everyone. Oh. And then just kept talking. Yeah. Great story. <laughs> As you do. It is. Maggie Coco. Right. Well, just so you know, if any, everybody knows if I have a heart attack here, yeah. I'm not going to keep going. No. That's... Oh, no. Well, we've got expectations here. Um, <laughs> the show must go on. It is. It will go. Even if I've got to sub Andrew into a dress. That's fine. <laughs> Producer Andrew is multi-talented. Um, thank you very much for coming on the North oh, of Artists Conversation. Pleasure. I think it's going to be quite a fun a fun night. This is going to be quite loose. Not not Tim Bell loose, <laughs> but still interesting. Okay. Um, now, obviously, we sort of talked just a little bit before. You're from Michigan originally, yeah? I am, yeah. Um, and so, obviously, New Zealand isn't wasn't your place of birth. Right. Okay. Um, you're the blah, 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 second... Se- uh, producer Andrew, second guest or third from America? I'm going to go with second because we had Fox. Fox, I know Fox yeah, was American. Second. So a second. So you're our second American guest. We've had a few from like England and stuff like that. Um, 
what was life like growing up for you in America? Because obviously, very, very fundamentally quite different countries. Fundamentally different countries, but also America is huge. And so um, I can only speak to what it's like to grow up in my small part of America. And um, coming from the, you know all the factors um i would say my my family was kind of a a transplant to uh michigan so not from okay hadn't been in michigan for a while i was the only our family was the only one in our immediate we only our immediate family was in michigan so everybody else was in um virginia and um new york and and places like that okay and so um we were not midwesterners at well at least like I'm a Midwesterner now, and I know that from leaving the Midwest. I'm like, ooh, I'm a Midwesterner. But growing up, my mom is not a Midwesterner, and she was very uncomfortable in the Midwest, so she was always like, Midwest. Oh, wow. (laughs) So I kind of of grew up with that same kind of like feeling like I don't really belong here. Okay. Yeah, I guess. So I always sort of felt like a bit of an outsider? Yeah, I always felt like a bit of an outlier. I'd say. Okay. Yeah. Um, you grew up there. Did you do all your schooling in Michigan? Did all of my schooling, everything through uni. Um, and um, I think it, it must have been my mental approach because there's nothing wrong with the place. You know, I've okay. been back since and been able to appreciate it more. But I right. think I absorbed some of that um, attitude growing up. And I was like, I don't like this place. I don't oh, know yeah, why. I yeah. just didn't didn't much appreciate it okay. growing up. And there, there are things that are, are certainly, um, certainly could be improved. Like, for example, one of Michigan's original industries was logging, and they did that so well. It's like a concrete jungle. There are no trees in lots of parts. Right. <laughs> in wow. lots of parts okay. of Michigan. So I, I remember on one of my first tours, I was like, why do I feel so much better in some of these cities? Yeah, you know, than okay. I do back home. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I think it's trees. I think it's that there are still trees here. Yeah. Like, that just makes a big difference to me. So like so. Vermont and places like that would be amazing. And I just I admit lots of Michigan is 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 very, um, um, you know, very much forest and gorgeous. And there's lots of beautiful things to see. But we didn't travel much. So I grew up oh, in this like right. kind of concrete jungle-ish kind of... Yeah. Um, space that um, I found very soul sucking. Okay. Yeah. Interesting perspective. Soul sucking. <laughs> Great choice of uh, words. W- okay. So Michigan's a state. Where did you actually grow up? So I grew up in Sterling Heights, which is part of Metro Detroit. It's the most populated city in Michigan. Okay. Um, and um, Detroit. It's, as in as in Detroit, Detroit. As in Detroit, Detroit, but it's okay. not in Detroit, Detroit. It's right. Metro Detroit. Okay. So, um, yeah. Hmm. All right. Uh, population? Oh, I don't know. Big. <laughs> bigger than bigger than Fungi, smaller than Auckland, <laughs> or no, right. no bigger than Auckland. Oh wow. Big. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I you know we hear Detroit, um, and you know there's uh, we a lot of people think of cars. Yes. A lot of cars are coming out of Detroit. What General Motors yeah. was there. I don't know if they're still there. Packard. Yeah. All that. Um, and then there's uh, crime. Um, <laughs> um, and I know Detroit from Beverly Hills Cop. Oh, there you go. Great film. Mm. Um, now, you obviously, you're a musician. Yes. Um, and for those of you that are watching and listening, uh, at home or on advice or wherever you are, um, Maggie was in the studio uh, all day today and had a little power nap and took some time to come and see us. She could have cancelled. She could have, but she really, really wanted to do this. So I, I would like to acknowledge that and say thank you very much. Wow. Um, as a musician, when did you first get bitten by the bug? When did it like really hit you? Were you surrounded by... Um, like, was there like a lot of music in the house? Were your parents musicians? Or how did that seed kind of start? I I always wanted to be a musician. I think it must have started with my dad because he was a, a guitar player, not a particularly good one, but a guitar player. Yeah. And um, so I um grew up listening to him, you know, picking up the acoustic and and playing around the house and um. 
it's kind of complicated because my um, dad, who identified as a musician, when he left when I was relatively young, okay. um, my mom then... Um, I'm just guessing here, but I think she just disliked anything that reminded her of him. My mom's never been a big fan of music okay. since yeah. that point. Not right. a lot of music in the house and things like that. Um, so... I mean, that would be a really tough situation as well, you know, because, you know, it's music's in the house, dad leaves, there's no music in the house, but that seed for you has kind of already been planted, right? Yeah. And then you want to do music. Now, do you find yourself in a position where it's like you do music, but that reminds mum of dad? Yeah, it was very difficult. Um, is my my mom, not only does that remind her of my dad, but she's a very, very practical person. Okay. And music yeah. is not a practical... Ooh. Um, no, it's not. Uh, Creative field in, de- in general yeah. is not really practical. Right, yeah. so... Um, Accounting... <laughs> Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we butted heads a lot. Yeah. A lot okay. about that in particular. Yeah. Um, when did sort of the music really start sort of taking hold and who were your early inspirations? I mean, it had taken hold. I knew I'd been saying I wanted to be a singer since I was a very small kid. Wow. And then it just never changed. Okay. And it's just it's very cute when you're a little kid and you're yes. like, I want to be a singer. And people are like, that's adorable. And mm-hmm. then when you get to like the ages where you're making life decisions and you're like, I want to be a pit singer. People are like, oh, yeah. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> it's not really a lot of job stability in, uh, <laughs> in, in, a, in a being a musician. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So for you, singing was always the first. Yes. Right. Early influences? Early influences. Yeah. Um, like, were you, like, when you were listening to music, where, so for so me, y- early, early ones for me was Aha. Oh, yes. Okay. The Hunting High and Low album still ranks as one of my mm. top albums of all time. That's what got me really deep into music. And then it was Def Leppard. And I progressively got heavier until I ended up at Cannibal Corpse. And then went, probably gone a bit too far, brought it back a bit. <laughs> um, so, so for you, what were your sort of influences? Um, so we had a handful of um, of CDs that... Um, my dad was so my dad was in a couple of bands and that did um, oh, wow. um you know cover bands uh that with guys named funky man and stuff like that and, nice yeah and they did um uh like rolling stones covers oh and that's that awesome kind of stuff. yeah so, yeah so i grew up uh around those songs and the things that those those bands could do i uh we had a a motown mixtape Oh wow! That I played a lot. Yeah, um, we had, and then we moved to to Detroit. So I like you asked about my early affiliation with yes. Detroit and growing up, and yeah. that's where that was growing right, up. But okay. it has since evolved. I'll just put, throw that out there. Um, what else? We had uh, we had a heart CD. We had the band a, heart. The, yeah, the band heart, like and so heart do Barracuda. Which, yes, which a lot of uh, yeah people know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Magic Man is still my karaoke yeah. song That's of your choice, jam. even with the really nice. long guitar solo. I'm still like I can do this. Yeah. Excellent. That. Yeah, very cool. <laughs> um, uh, Fleetwood Mac. Uh, oh, we yeah. had we had Billy Joel. We had Elton John. Yeah. We had all of the you know so all of these big names from the. 70s and yeah and well those that was you know really the day of the you know singer songwriter and where song structure and composition and all that sort of stuff not to say it isn't there now but those sort of artists are very revered um you know fleetwood max rumors jesus what a gargantuan album and i remember <laughs> listening to that th- through mum and dad as well so yeah. okay so if music is taking over your life and it's like I'm going to be a singer through to I'm going to be a singer. <laughs> How was your academic? Oh, I mean, really good. I I came from a well, I say really good in that um, it came quite easily. Okay, um, right. I didn't, I didn't, I don't know that I tried very hard. I just did relatively well, and I don't know that I was in incredibly. Um, um, I didn't. I don't know that I pushed myself all that hard. I took some advanced courses, but yeah. I was just largely like, as long as I get some A's, you know. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, so I was, I was largely a straight A, a student. It, it 
I mean, academic stuff has always come quite easily for me and I okay. really enjoy it. Yeah. But that's my mom's side of the family, 100%. My mom's right. side of the family is all academics. Okay. So, yeah. What did what, what did mom do for work? So my mom, you said she was a practical person, she's yeah? She's a very practical person. She's an occupational therapist. Right, yeah, okay, um, yeah. Her um, father is a, a physics professor at uh, Buffalo University and her mother um who kind of in the era was kind of forced to give up her work to right. raise the okay. kids yeah. but she yeah. was more she was a scientist she was um and and like an absolute phenom my grandmother she had the highest grades in all of new york state wow and like went to school on you know like <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah and then it was just such a shame that she had to yeah. to different time back then different time yeah like so essentially mum's side of the family is just intellectual af mm. wow and then dad's side creative so i, I guess you kind of yeah sort of found that that niche where you were like i'm smart i don't have to really try and, and i'm creative and i love this side of things as well Oh, that's I've never I've never thought of it that way, but I like that. You're welcome. <laughs> um, so you, you you get through high school, and then where do you go? What what happens with you next? Are you like I'm gonna go to uni? I'm gonna go work? I'm gonna go be a poor unemployed on the bones of my ass musician? Which of those three paths did you choose? <laughs> I I was an absolute turmoil at that um, point in my life because I was also a, a very very depressed teenager right okay um so i at the point that i graduated high school and was absolutely determined to be a musician yeah well you know like dramatically and my mother was like absolutely not you know kind of thing we ended up um she was trying to save me you know and i and i i understand i appreciate where she's coming from um but uh, i was very I didn't quite know how to flex my muscles as an adult. I was always a very obedient child, yeah. you know. And um, so my mom at the time was like, you're only allowed to do these things. And so we, we ended up compromising in that I went to a nearby university okay. with yeah. a, a music program where I, I got a degree in voice performance. And I also wow. got a degree in music education. Okay, so you've got a, like a fallback. Mm. So, you know, you've got a bit of theory behind you and stuff like that. So, um, you know, you can go out and do the music stuff, but you can also fall back on some teaching. Yeah. Yeah, nice. I would never, now that I've gone through it and I have a passion for teaching, I would never call it a fall. I would never recommend it as a fallback because you're actually shaping other people's yes you know understanding understanding of things and if you're not passionate about sharing that with students you can just kill it so i mm. i i know musicians who do teaching as a fallback and it's a terrible idea because yeah. nobody wants to be there yeah you know you should, i feel like you should only teach if you really yeah and you know there is all the there is that adage of those that can't do teach oh um, i think that's is, ridiculous because it's a completely different skill which set is horrific, a, but yeah. also you know like it's it's not a not doing yeah it's yeah. yeah it is a horrific thing i do sometimes feel like um sometimes people assume that i'm not as good of a performer as I am because of all the teaching I do. And then I occasionally have people who know me as a teacher first, who then see me perform and are like, I, like, you're like wow. so good and okay. like almost surprised. And I'm like, yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. So you get your, get your degrees. Mm. Um, and then where do you sort of head from that point onwards? Because I mean, you're you're at a real crossroads at this point, right? I'm at a crossroads because I'm I'm still following orders, you know, all yeah. the way through uni. I'm following, still doing what mum tells still you, still do, doing right? what I'm yeah. supposed to be doing. But I'm also doing what my dad is telling me to do because my dad has resurfaced by this time. Oh, he's popped back up. Yeah, so okay. it's it's a very complicated kind of situation i'll try to synthesize it as quickly as i can and succinctly um but uh my dad was a, a stage dad of sorts so he came oh, back yep, yeah yep. so the he saw my potential and came back into my life when i was about 15 okay. and i started spending weekends with him 
yep, sure. um, where he was developing my career and things like that. And um, so all through uni, um, I was doing two programs. I was doing my university program and then mm -hmm. I was doing this star training program that my dad was putting right, me through. Yeah, okay. um, he had no idea what he was doing. I didn't know that he had no idea what he was doing, but he yeah, had no yeah. idea. At what the he was time, doing. it probably seemed like, oh, dad knows exactly what he's talking about. Yeah. I believe dad, sure, why not? Right. Um, and so, right after uni, I went full time into my star training. Right. Wow. Okay. With my dad. Yeah. And uh, mum didn't like that. No. Well, I did, well, there wasn't really anything she could do. My dad had me signing NDAs and all kinds of stuff. I wasn't allowed to talk to her about what I was doing. Um, so I actually didn't speak to my mom very much. Okay. Yeah. It gets intense. You're starting to, to kind it's, of... It's got a very... Uh, understand the situation. Yeah, very uh, very Jackson 5. It's very Jackson 5. Vibe. It's very um, Britney Spears vibe. Yeah. All that, unfortunately. Okay. Um, so as you say NDA, yeah, it's like, mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay. It got very intense. I... Um, he was, I've since learned that my dad is one of these people who has these big ideas and no follow through, but is very charismatic and gets right, people okay. to buy yep. onto them and yep. stuff. So I, I did a lot of shows and we actually raised a lot of money and things like that. I don't know. I have no idea about figures or anything like that. Part of this whole setup was that um, I was allowed to just be a musician and he did everything else. Right. Okay. Um, yeah. And that was really tempting and lovely. And I want, and it was my dad and I wanted it to be a good and healthy and safe thing. And it yeah. was well, not. Because it's your dad, right? Yeah. You, tr you trust your dad. Yeah. I mean, you know, he may have bowed out for a little bit, but dad came back. Yeah. And I got dad in my life again. Dad's amazing. Yeah. Just stick with dad. Trust dad. Mm. And I had so many people telling me how lucky I was to have my dad, um, yeah. you know, yeah. doing all those things. And I, I really believed, I really wanted to, eventually the, the threads all fell away and um, it was a lot worse than I could have imagined. It ended with lawyers and all kinds of things. Wow. But, yeah. So really the house of cards sort of just crumbles down. You mm. know, like, okay, so what do you do from that point onwards? Because, man, you got to rebuild from, what, nothing? Yeah. You know, you've 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 done all this hard work and you've had all the star training and you've done these concerts and you've raised money and you're like, I'm on my way, I'm on my way. Ah, oh, shit, the ass falls completely out of it. And it's like, well, what do I do now? So what do you do now? Um... I tried to just keep on. I tried to, I put together my own band. I was like, everything that he taught me to do, I'm going to do it on my own. Yeah. But as I was doing it, I was also figuring out that a lot of the stuff he taught me was just bullshit. Okay. You right. know? Yeah. And a lot of it was lies. He lied about a lot of stuff. Like, um, like just to give you an idea, he lied about his entire background. So everything that I thought I knew about my dad was yeah. also wrong. Okay. Wow. Which is crazy. Yeah. You know, so um, I was just trying to find the ground underneath me and the yep. world had become suddenly a, um, a much more beautiful and much scarier place at the same time okay. because my dad's, one of his things, his control mechanisms was that I wasn't to trust anybody except him. That everybody right, okay. else was Out to not it was not to be trusted yep. and all these kinds of things. So now I realized that my dad was the person who couldn't be trusted, and so I, I didn't know who to trust. Yep. But I also knew that he was if he was wrong about all these things, there was probably plenty of people out there that were trustworthy. Yeah. I knew I was a trustworthy person. Or, yep. You know, um, so yeah, it was hard, and I. Almost didn't make it a couple of times, but I'm here. Nice. <laughs> well, it's glad, I'm, we're glad that you are. Thanks. You've got really... I, I think the the one cool thing is, like, we've had a few musers on before that have all had, like, some different backgrounds, and, you know, a lot of them talk about um, the dark times, mm. um, and it, it just seems to be one of those sort of common denominators. Um, we have one guest who talked... He didn't talk extensively, but he talked about the falling into the lifestyle of touring. Ah, uh, Yes drugs and alcohol mm. um and you know we've had uh, another muso who's sort of on the rise and he was great talked openly about his 
um, anxiety and the fears that he faces and you know self crippling self doubt mm. and how he managed to sort of persevere and push through it so you know the fact that you've been able to do that again a huge testament um, which I, I think is really cool and I know that you know the, the Whangarei music scene is, is better off having you around oh thanks I, I, I love being here um, I couldn't in a million years have imagined um, anything about my life now like five years ago wow so it really has changed that much completely so let's let's go back a little bit mm. your dad's gone out of the picture okay you're at a point where you're like i'm i'm gonna do my own thing i'm gonna get my own shit together i'm gonna mm. figure out who i can and can't trust right um and then are you doing the touring circuit? Are you recording? Are you thinking, I'm just going to get out of the States? Where's your sort oh, of head at at I'm this point? I'm doing all the things. I was um, I was recording. I'm, I'm still very attached to... Um, I'm still not very sure of myself. So I'm still looking for other people to lead me and guide me and sure. things like that. So yep. unfortunately, that means that I fall prey to other people similar to my dad um you know here and there for a while um it takes a while of figuring out the common denominators and the role i play in that to to eventually be like right and and sort of that dynamic right Mm. yeah which is tough um uh, but i do i do put out i have like a, a a blues rock band that i start at that point that i'm still that i still do i still do a couple of shows a year with you know nice. musicians doing that um i love that that's more modeled after the heart pat benatar kind yeah. of oh thing. yeah definitely um, so, some tedeschi trucks and i just um Man. i just be my my utter rock goddess yeah you know everything that i um didn't all the confidence that I didn't have, yeah. I had on stage when yeah. I was that version of me. I can 100% relate to that. <laughs> Absolutely. And it's, yeah, okay, cool. So you do you do that? So I do that and I still do that and I still do that music. It makes me cringe a little bit sometimes because it's a younger version of myself. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. That wrote those songs and things like that. But it, it's not actually yeah. that cringy. And whenever I share it with other musicians, they're always like, oh, this is really good. And I'm like, yay. You know, because like, I don't know. <laughs> I wrote it 15 years ago. <laughs> yeah, I know. Like, it's, I told that. Oh, my life is so different now. <laughs> Northland Artist Conversation proudly supports 1737. 1737 are a free service uh, that you can contact either via phone or text message. They're available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, On their website, 1737.org.nz, they say, are you feeling stressed or just need to talk to someone? Are you feeling down or a bit overwhelmed? Do you know someone who is feeling out of sorts? Whatever it is, they're there for you. Free call or free text anytime, 24 hours a day. And you'll get to talk with a trained counsellor or talk with a peer support worker. Their service is completely free. They offer brief one-on-one counselling support sessions for those people that need it a little bit more than normal. Please do not be afraid to reach out if you need support or if you know someone else that needs support as well. 1737 are a fantastic service. And we here at the North and Artist Conversation are very, very proud to support what they do. 1737, free text or free call. You obviously you still do the um, the the rock blues band every mm. now and then. What are the what were sort of the other bands that you were doing while still living in the States? Um so I ended up I got to a point after all of that and, and being in Michigan um, um, where I was like, I need I need something else. I need something different. So I moved to, and I'd done little stints in, in other places and little things here and there, but hadn't like uprooted myself. Right. Yet. So you hadn't like so, fully transplanted your whole life somewhere else. Right. Okay. So I decided to uproot and go to uh, San Francisco. 
Oh, sand frame. Very nice. Yeah. Very creative. Yeah. Beautiful space. Yeah. And um, I wanted to, I still had a lot of doubt um, about my ability. I didn't know if I was actually a very good musician or if I was just um, pliable and of you right, know. yeah yeah so uh, able to be molded into something you right know, you didn't have that this is my voice right thing yet okay was that from you know your your dad and kind of what had happened there or had that kind of been the whole way through um part of my star training one of the things i was taught was that i should be uh, a a a a beautiful blank canvas that anyone could imagine themselves painting on okay sure right that makes no sense right <laughs> because the great artists have their own voice and they found their voice really early on right um blank canvas bollocks so i feel like i i had a voice yeah that was then stifled through okay. all of this training yeah, sure and it was a process of getting back to it but i did it's not that i knew for sure that i had it i had to remember that i had it you, 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 essentially, you've got to rediscover yourself, right? Hmm. And yeah. I mean, that that's not an overnight journey. That's that's a period of time well, journey. Everybody's got to discover themselves, you know, yeah. and everybody has to has um, conditioning through life that they have to undo. Mm. Mine was mm -hmm. just at, at at a pretty extreme level. I'd say when I watch. Um, when I when I watch interviews from people who've been in cults and things like that for a long time, I feel a kindred indoctrination. Yeah, yeah, it's, like, like Waco, yeah. Jim Jones, that sort of stuff. Yeah, hundred okay. percent. Charismatic was, cult leader, and everyone follows him blindly and does what they told. It was very much like right. that. Okay. Mm. Um, okay. So, <laughs> and I, fun, funnily enough, how I came to New Zealand, I was still, and this was after I went to San Francisco. Okay. So I went to San Francisco and I, I wanted to prove to myself that I was actually a good musician. Yeah. And San Francisco is the most expensive city in the United States. Yes, it is. And um, essentially, if I couldn't make a living there as a musician, then I figured Ooh, I might yeah. not be a very, okay. you know, maybe I'm not. That's a hard task to try and achieve, yeah? I did really well. Did you? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Congratulations. The Thanks. happy story. That's I awesome. Know. Yeah. So I got there, um, but I wasn't doing original music okay, i right. got there and i was was started started auditioning for um bands like corporate bands you guys don't really have them here new zealand's not quite big enough um because it doesn't doesn't have enough people to support this kind right, of thing yep, but essentially yep. it was like musician rosters that you audition for and you have to be good enough to show up to a gig and play with musicians that you've never met before right a yeah. set list that you've been given in advance yeah. no rehearsals or anything like that it has to be you know um completely professional as the singer i was often the person who was leading the band so then everybody yeah. would have to follow you so like my very first show that i so i auditioned i got in within three months of moving to san francisco um which i later found out that like there's people who've been there who just never wow never get into these bands so i was it's luck it was timing it was a lot of things yeah, but yeah. it was very validating for me so i um my very first show like the the bass player was um a, a bass player that plays with sly and the family stone and the keyboardist was someone who plays with um earth wind and fire and stuff like that that's, that's just a hell of a rhythm section where these musicians live wow. right and these are the gigs that they do yeah, in yeah. there because they pay between Three hundred and fifty and six hundred dollars a gig. Um, okay, it's not bad. You know, it's not yeah. bad. Um, you know, U.S. of course, and you know, and that's yeah. and then they cover your your travel and yeah, your accommodation, you know, all that and kind you of get per diems and stuff. Like yeah, that. yeah, so it was like it was incredibly validating, and at the same time, I knew that it wasn't something. It wasn't my my next lifestyle, yeah, my next sure. permanent one. Yeah. Um, because I wanted to do my music, yep. and also, um, and I had to do this. I really had to hustle, to do, you know, to to do yeah. this and to, yep. to to pay the pay the rents there and and all that kind of stuff. Um. But I learned a lot, and I played with a lot of really amazing musicians, and I'm I learned a lot about myself. Yeah. 
Um, and then I had an opportunity to come to New Zealand. Um, I, I, had, I had a few different opportunities, but the, the one that changed my life in this direction okay. was I, I had an opportunity to uh, come to New Zealand uh, to open for Billy TK. Billy, Billy TK, T- the guitarist. T- wow. not, no, not oh, the senior, um, junior. The junior? Yeah. Right. Right. Okay. So you remember how I said the, the like those kinds of people still kind of came up? Yes. They still they still, they still pop up every now and then. Every now. Wow. <laughs> and, um, That's um. Look, I'll be honest. <laughs> Sly Family Stone, Earth, Wind, and Fire. I, I love the song September. Mm. Um, and Billy TK Jr. Right. No, I know. Um, it's just. I mean, he's good. Right. He's good. Not not earth, wind, and fire. I know, but good. I <laughs> well, what 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 appealed to me was uh, he came to a gig of mine in San Francisco and was like, "Hey, how would you like to come open for me in New Zealand?" And my I've always wanted to travel, and yep. I've been very fortunate to have gotten to do a little bit of it. But I I don't come from money and we didn't travel growing up so i've always wanted to but i've always had a very vague notion of what traveling even is because i didn't have the experience never really done it yeah i was like but i'd love to do it you Mm -hmm. know kind of thing and um i told myself and i don't know i i've stuck by it not necessarily intentionally just because it's part of the lifestyle but i've told myself you're gonna get to travel but you're going to do it through music. It's always going to be you're invited to go someplace. Yeah, so sure. like my first international tour was in Ireland because somebody saw me performing in a bar and was like, I will pay for you to come play in Ireland. So I did wow. that. And, and that's how I've done most of my tours. This people who have seen me playing places go, I want you to do that over there. And so yeah. that's where I go. Um, so I, I'd done it before, and so Billy came to one of my shows and was like, you're going to come open for me in New Zealand. But also, people offer these things frequently, and nothing happens. That never 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 actually manifest, you know? So I'm always like, yeah, cool, but also I'll I'll believe it when I see it kind of thing. But it has has happened, you know? Um, Actually, that's how I've done all of my traveling so far. Um, So, uh, yeah, so within a few weeks i actually had a ticket to new zealand in my yeah in your hands in my like going, in my there. email and i was yeah. like oh crap i'm going to new zealand and also it was only like for two weeks okay from right. the date that i got the thing so then i had to be like Aah! and like get people to yeah. cover all my gigs and my classes and yeah and everything like that but people are super cool and they you know they all i had to do was like i have an opportunity to go to new zealand they were like say no more we will cover for you yeah kind of thing people yeah. were great um yeah, so I came to New Zealand. That was just supposed to be a five-week tour okay. opening for Billy, and we did all of these like um, community hall type spaces, oh, yeah, yeah. but in like the middle of nowhere, yeah. New Zealand um, type places, which was amazing and also just like i couldn't even have fathomed it before i got yeah. on the road yeah. i'd never even of course i knew that new zealand was a place but i didn't know anything about it sure and i did barely any research before i got on the plane because i the rings. only had to exactly i was like <laughs> where are you going lord of the rings place hey. well, it's gonna be beautiful it will be. yeah um and it is and i love it, is. it it's gorgeous yeah it's amazing um so i was here on tour with Billy, and I, I, that's how I ended up um, in those documentaries about Billy TK later oh, on because okay. I had recently been on tour with him. Yeah. And then when COVID lockdown hit, we was still friends with him on Facebook and stuff. Yeah. And I, I, he has since unfriended me, by the way. I watched him go through his spiral because he's, he's, he's similar to my dad type person. He needs okay. an audience. He's motivated by... You know, sex, fame, um, money. Sex, drugs, rock and roll. Exactly. That's his whole lifestyle. But he's also got this sort of Christian thing going on. And to be fair, I think it is authentic to him. It's just that he cycles very quickly. Like he would go to, he would wake up in the morning and suddenly be very Christian and not repentant. Like he wouldn't acknowledge that he'd done any weird shit the night before. Just in the morning, he'd be suddenly very Christian and be like, everyone, let's pray together and blah, blah, blah. And over the course of the day, he would just devolve into complete debauchery. And like everybody else was always having to catch him. And like, what goes on tour stays on tour. uh, Right. And like you see guys like that. And, And honestly, I, I knew it was a mess. I didn't want to be 
dealing with that kind of musician on the on a regular basis i just yeah. wanted to come to new zealand yeah well you're, you're here to perform <laughs> here the to fact perform. that you're getting to tour uh, uh, the beautiful country and see everything is is like a bonus but you're here to you know perform and entertain and sing yeah you know you're not here to deal with people's shit yeah i mean i i i had a an idea from meeting him that there might be some of that but you never know you know what i yeah, mean yeah and um it was just woo, it was next level and then he fumbled the whole last leg of the tour which was supposed to be in australia okay. somehow he didn't like the money for my ticket to australia disappeared Right, and my okay. band's tickets. When my, all my band was all New Zealanders. Right, okay. So we were all supposed to go over yep. to Sydney. Suddenly that wasn't happening. And there was like a week and a half left of, oh, wow. uh, before my flight wow. back home. Yep. And yeah. I was like, I suppose I'll just tour tourist. But also... Um, I don't I don't have anything you know and I, I still yeah, have like yeah. San Francisco rent back home and all yeah. that kind of stuff and so I was like I'm just gonna reach out to everybody I've met um on this tour so far and yeah. just ask if anybody has work for me and someone up in Northland um responded and was like hey come up and you can play a gig at, I've booked two gigs for us and then I'm gonna have you do some session work for me I'll pay you for that and wow, and then nice. and this was just with my last for four four or five days in, yeah, in new zealand, in new zealand so i was yeah. just gonna come spend it in northland and then okay. he was gonna bring me down to auckland to catch my flight and um this is where things get really interesting it's but just a heads up this is my worst and my best tour story of all okay. time okay see if it's a worst Happened and a right best here. rolled into one let's hear it okay so i um come up we play this show at um again like a uh a rural bar okay. kind of like not close to to anything yeah and at the end of this gig which ends at like 11 something on a saturday night okay um which as you know means everything is done you know in, oh, yeah. in this yeah. part of the You're world shutting it down exactly yeah, like we're not there's no after party there's no after party. it's like we're gonna be it Right. So uh, the, the guy who I'm supposed to, who like, it's a home studio that I'm supposed to be working oh, for yeah. him. And, okay. and I'm supposed to be staying at his house. And after the gig is when he goes, actually, my girlfriend's not comfortable with you staying at my place. Can you find some place else to stay? And I was like, I don't know. Can I? All right. <laughs> right. Then. Yeah. 11 o'clock on the Saturday. Yeah. Everyone's gone. Right. Got to find myself a place yeah. to stay. In the middle of... Nowhere. Nowhere. Yeah. So, and I don't have a car or anything. I just have a backpack. Um, so, God. so um, he's oh. like, well, this group of people, we made like he was friends with, I don't know. Everybody seems to know each other. I'm not from a small place, so I don't know everybody knowing each other and yeah. what those dynamics are like. I know them better now, but I didn't know. Yeah, back then, it'd have been like, okay. Yeah, right, it was like, well, he seems mm. to know these people. So yeah. he's like, it's three girls and two guys. And he's like, they're going to go into Fungare, the big city. Yes. And, um, they're going to go clubbing is what he said that's right clubbing in Whangarei right <laughs> producer Andrew's trying not to laugh <laughs> and so he's like um, he's like you go with them they said they'd look after you and I like those odds three girls two guys you know sure. I'm like it'll be alright one of the guys is like incredibly drunk and is hovering over me and saying things like I like girls with accents and I'm like no okay I'll just yeah. avoid you uh, and then uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I like being by myself <laughs> <laughs> I like sober guys yeah <laughs> <laughs> and, and the other guy is sober he's the sober driver but he can't uh, can't string two words together to make a sentence from what i can tell because okay. i'm attempting conversation and nothing's yeah. coming back so yeah. i'm like that's okay i will just stick with the you know with the women and so we head into town and everything's fine on the drive and everyone's in high spirits and giggly and i'm having a good time and then pretty much as soon as we get to the first bar the girls go into the bathroom and they're going as a group so i go with them because i guess that's what you yep, do sure and um and they start doing pee oh righty in then. the bathroom and i'm like oh no <laughs> those which by the way they offered me some and they offered me pee and we don't call it that i didn't know the slang i didn't know yeah, the terminology yeah, i just yeah. you know and i wasn't yeah. yeah i was just like i'm just gonna nope right out of this situation but now i'm in this bar and i've got um you know drunk guy 
three uh, women on P and one and no conversation uh, and, guy. Uh, no conversation guy. Yeah. And I'm like, I, I'm not liking my odds anymore. And it's Statistically, like, they're not in your favor. They're not in my favor. And it's like 12:30 in the morning. Oh shit. So shit. I. Okay. <laughs> so in walks my to the bar walks my now husband Mickey. No. Yeah. No, stop it. <laughs> yeah. Mickey. Yeah. Really? Yeah. So he had just had, it was some sort of a sporting event on TV or something. Anyway, he had just like had this barbecue and they'd watch the sporting thing and yeah. he and the guys were, were, were going out to the bar. So he walks in and I had met him before. Oh, okay. I had met, he had come to the first show of the tour. Right. Okay. Yeah. Because cool. it was in, the first show of the tour was in Fongare. Yeah. So he, he came to the first show of the tour. He's also a musician. So I'd had a conversation with okay. him. Yeah. Cool. At least knew that he was like a. Sober and could have a conversation. Yes. So it's already like two steps up. Right. My man. Yeah. So the way that he tells it is that I saw him from the other side of the bar and I jumped into his arms. What, okay. What probably happened was I was like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, that, would, that possibly would have happened if you'd have done the pee, yeah. but, but you didn't. So possibly not. <laughs> so, um, but I, I, you know, I was like, that's my that's my my safe yeah my safe haven yeah. so I, I i approach i'm like do you remember me and he's like yes you're that american musician what are you doing here and i didn't want to spring it on him right away so i just let him you know i was like oh let's just have a drink you know kind yeah. of thing so yeah. we, we were having a drink and um the super drunk guy comes over takes the drink that mickey has just bought me okay takes it away from me right right and cans me another drink that he's bought me that I haven't seen anybody poor, you know, that kind oh, of yeah. thing. But does this right in front of Mickey, who's yeah. like, you Who know, you? what do you do? Yeah. You know, and the then the girls come over, take Mickey's drink from the table in front of him and just start drinking it in front of him and giggling. Uh -huh. Right. So very, uh, you know, and then they, they eventually That's a kinda, lot of awkwardness. There's a lot of awkward, so much awkward, right? So then he's like... <laughs> you know, like, I'm like, all yeah. right, so out with he's, it. Yeah, you know, he's, he's like, giving so, you the look like, I feel like there's a story here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Let's have you come clean, shall yes, we? Yes, and I'm like, okay. <laughs> so here's the situation. So yeah. I explained it to him. He's like, okay, so you, like, you need, like, help. I yeah. was like, yes, please. Yeah. <laughs> you, know? you need an exit strategy. <laughs> We need to get your daughter's protection. <laughs> yeah. And so he's like, okay, let me just go tell the guys that I came here with that, you know, you're, um, you're leaving with me. And I was like, perfect. Yeah. Um, so he goes to tell them. Now, Mickey is a, a high school English teacher in yeah. Fungi or was for a long time. He's since stopped teaching. But um, so he, I find this out later, but he walks you know, like on route to his buddies, he's swarmed by a bunch of his students and former students who are all drunk and like, Mister, you know, uh, being all cheeky, yeah. get, buy us a beer, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. You know, so he's, you know, and he's yeah. a popular teacher. He's yeah. a good guy. Yeah. So he's, you know, so he's, he's a bit swarmed over there. And um, I, this is where I went wrong. I went to go tell the guy who, you know, non-conversational non -conversation guy. Non-conversational guy. I went to go tell him you know, it's been real, but I'm going to go in this direction. And suddenly he's very chatty. And he's like, how long have you known this guy? How much have you had to drink? I'm like literally longer than you. And yeah. I stopped drinking a while ago, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. like, <laughs> um, but he's not having any of it. And, and he's like, well, we told, you know, guitarist so-and-so that we were respond that we would be Sure. Responsible for you. Yeah. So you're leaving with us. Uh -huh. And so he and super drunk guy, this gets worse before it gets better. Oh, God. I thought we had hit the worst part. Is it gonna, it's going to get darker. It's going to get darker, but it has oh, a good ending, God so it's okay. It. Jesus. Okay. Mm. Andrew, just get a look on my, you know, can we just close up on my face? There's like concern there. It's like, oh, my God. <laughs> right. Okay. Here we go. Let's Let's have the darkness. Right. Not the band, but just the darkness. <laughs> just listen to the room, my heart. <laughs> just just <listen>. walk <laughs> We digress. <laughs> We've got to throw some comedy in there. Right, Shit's about to like, get real. What happens next? Yeah. So, um, the two guys kind of like semi pick me up from either side, like from under my arms on either side of me, and mm -hmm. the girls are walking with us, and they're walking me out of the bar into the van while I'm still trying to convince them that I can make my own decisions. Okay. You know, and then um, 
I'm in a van, you know. Did they ask you if the cloth smelt funny? <laughs> Thank no. God. Right. Um, so I'm in the back of this van. No one is listening to me. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I, has, I haven't processed that I'm technically being kidnapped. I won't process that until later. I yeah. still think there's a communication breakdown yeah, yeah, yeah. happening. Yeah, it's like, no, look, you're you know? we're just not understanding each other. No, right. it's kidnapping. Right. So we're in this van and they stop at the, the, gas, the BP on Maunu. Oh, right? yep, yep. And um, I haven't exchanged information with Mickey. So I'm oh, just right. gone. That's it. Right. As far as he's concerned, you were but, there and then you're not. Right. So, but he, because he's aware of the situation and is brilliant, finds me on Facebook Messenger, sends me a message. I still have my phone and stuff on me. So yeah. I'm, you know, just like, I'm in a van. I'm trying to tell them they're not listening to me. Yeah. And um, so he calls me on Messenger. So yeah. he's like, where are you? They had just stopped at this BP and um, the driver is paying for the gas and the drunk guy is peeing on the side of the building or something. Okay. And there's just me and the three girls in the back and their heads are lolling. They have no idea what's right. happening. Okay. So I, he's like, I know where you are. Um, can you get out of the van? And I was like, yeah, I think so. You know, I just crawl over them and get out of yeah, the van. Yeah, sure. And, and just start speed walking back the direction that the van came. So it's about a mile. It's yeah. About about 1. Right. 1.3 miles, something yeah. like that. Um, funnily enough, I like live very near there now. Oh, <laughs> stop is, it. I know, it's crazy. Like every day I get to relive the trauma. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like there's nothing like facing trauma head on, I guess. I mean, yeah. it works for some people, doesn't work for others. That's yeah. fine. Right, right. Okay, so you're crawling over these Right, so I get out, beauties. I'm like speed walking, yep. trying to inconspicuously, it's like 2 a.m. in Bangladesh in the you know, middle of the night. And so I'm like speed walking back the direction that the van came from and Mickey, who's on foot, Foot because he'd been drinking and yep, didn't drive yep, to the bar. Yep, is running. Wow, running towards man. where I am. Right? My man, and so he catches up with me, and um, is basically like you know holding my hand, and we're just like speed walking together, like in the direction of the yep. thing. So then, what uh, the van regroups, comes around, pulls up in, in a, a driveway in front of us, and the girls in the back throw the door open. And they're like, um, leave her alone. Like, he's the problem. Because, again, I, I don't know that anybody knows what's happening, really. But they're just, like, screaming at Mickey to leave her alone yeah. and for me to get in the car. And then uh, Mickey's, like, got his hands up in the air. And he's like, I'm not, I'm not touching her. She's free to go, you know, kind yeah. of thing. But yeah. he's got his phone in his hand. He's like, if anybody gets out of the car, I'm calling the police. I was like, good call, you know. Um <laughs> Mickey has more to say about this because he feels like he had this, com like he clocked that one of the girls was more compass mentis than the others and was able right. to be like a. How I feel about it is that it was ho a whole like come like a Maggie come to us like I was like a dog or something Maggie here yeah. Maggie here kind come of in. a situation come on you know come on yeah. But eventually wow. they sussed that they were losing and they didn't get out of the car they slammed the door shut and peeled off. So you, the van drives off, Mickey's there, mm -hmm. you're there. Do you have your backpack or is that gone? I have my backpack. Okay, you've got yeah. your backpack. Because that was a question I wanted to ask while you are telling the story. I was like, does she have the backpack? It never left my back, actually. Okay, I just right. it on the whole time. That's good. So you obviously achieved full Dora, which is great. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, this, oh man, I'm just imagining that episode. And you know what they were? They were swiper trying to swipe. Uh, um, oh god. I know dad jokes. Mm. So what happened from that point onwards? So I uh, we need the good, right? We need the, the good. good. So uh, I mean, the rest is so good. So Mickey, um, you know, like walks me back to the, his place, and Mickey's from Belfast. Okay. Yep. And grew up during the Troubles, so uh, oh yeah, he, the, yeah, he's the... very. Um, Unfortunately, he has the life experience to kind of know how to handle that situation. Yeah, yeah. And so he's like, do you want to go to the cops? And, you know, I was like, oh, I don't really want to go to the cops. And he's like, OK, but he's walking me like, down like lit pathways and mm -hmm. things like that. And he's also talking me through everything he's doing. Like he's sounding like clearly someone who knows what they're doing in this yeah. situation, which is always also a little bit. Mm. Well, yeah, you got to be like, how, how do you know what how to do, do in this situation? This? Yeah. I'm feeling really comfortable, but. I'm not entirely too sure what... Oh. 
a few years later, the penny drops and you go, yeah, that makes sense now. Yeah, yeah, yeah wow. totally. He was just the right person for yeah, the situation absolutely. somehow. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so and he's like walking me by um, cameras and pointing them out. And he's like, wave to the camera. If anything happens to you, they're coming for me, yep. you know, kind of thing. And it just like, I mean, at that point, I'd made my bed. So I was like, whatever happens here. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. look, uh, yeah, you're probably going, you're nicer than uh drunk no conversation meth heads um so how really how far can it go right exactly yeah so he brought me back to to his place and he had like i mentioned he'd had a barbecue that day so he had all this oh, yeah. food, food. Yeah. And it was beautiful and he's like and he was just got v- like very like what do you need and like suddenly i was like piled with blankets and like he had like a yeah. spread of food in front of me and all yeah. this stuff and he's like <laughs> like looking at me like what do you need and i was like this is good thanks yeah you know um and then he got really cute and he was like um he was like i thought when you saw me and were very excited to see me that there was something but a, con- a connection a there. connection there yeah. he's like but now yeah. i realize that you were just yeah. looking for someone who wasn't yeah please oh god please 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 save yeah. me yeah exactly right. and he's like so he's like um so he he's like I, j- I just wanted you to know that that's what i thought but now i know better and anyway i'm gonna go to bed and okay. so he right. just yeah. like yeah. you know l- yeah. let me do it and he like gave me space you know um <laughs> which was very sweet so he like in a very clumsy and adorable way like let me know that he was attracted to me yeah. but that he didn't want to yeah. you know like yeah it was just really cute um but i was only in new zealand for four more days and i was still supposed to be working with that yeah. guy yeah 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 and so that guy um he kept he was stayed in touch via text oh wow okay. but then uh like i even told him what happened he was like oh that sucks i was like oh Oh, it's glad to see that uh, my welfare is your top priority. <laughs> right, exactly. Um, but he ended up um, uh, like staying in touch, kept saying that he was going to show up and then didn't. Oh, okay. Like over the next several days. So yep. Mickey and I would say goodbye. He was like, you could stay as long as you need to. But yep. I was always like, I won't need to. I'm going. Yeah. And um, so we would say he would go to work we would say goodbye like i was never gonna see him again and he would come back and i would from work and i would still be there wow and then he was like do you want to go to dinner do you want to go to the beach do you want to you know so he took me to whale bay and there was nobody there and there was a sunset and it was incredibly romantic and all this stuff and at one point he's like can i kiss you and i was like no because i'm never gonna see you again and you know just all that he's like i'm gonna bend the knee yeah (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) can't get a kiss might as well ask for marriage (laughs) yeah (laughs) so um yeah so we just had like four days of just um hanging out and being cool yeah it was it was beautiful Mm. it was incredibly romantic without it ever actually you know yeah because he was you know just a well yeah you guys had four days and that was kind of going to be it right yeah and then um the last day was the uh november the 5th okay and you guys do fireworks and all that kind of stuff here we don't have that back home so he and i were walking the loop Mm -hmm. and these fireworks start going off um and um he's like oh i I organized this for you and i was like oh "Oh, stop it Stop it! That's yeah. a major pimp daddy oh, right there. Oh man, I was like, oh maybe <laughs> I've Swoon. missed. Yeah, maybe I missed. Him. Um, but I figured out that he was li- like that night. It didn't take me long. I was like, no, no. Yeah. He went too far when he was like, cue the dolphins, you know. Oh right. But, <laughs> <laughs> but it was really good. It was, it was just. It was I just. Present a, you with Ariel. Yes, it was just a beautiful time with a beautiful person, and then I um went back to he actually took a day off work uh, i can say that now because he's not working in yep, school yeah, anymore yeah. he took a day off work yeah. he was sick to drive me yeah. um, <laughs> down to auckland yep. and we we um i think we sang the grease soundtrack like all the sure, way all the way yeah. down and just just had a good time i took us six hours to get down there we took our time and that's, that's <laughs> six hours it's taking you time. <laughs> time i mean even with the current roading delays it's still <laughs> less than six hours <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and when we got to um, we got to the band house. Yep. Uh, and had like a last jam with everybody, and oh, yeah, Mickey sure. was like the hero of the night because we told everybody what happened. Everyone was like, "Hey," you know, and yeah. so I was able to give him that, you know, kind of thing. And then um, and then I was off, and on the plane, I'd spent so much time worrying about not crossing any lines with him yeah, and sure. blah 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 that I had 
like not really processed that I'd fallen in love with him. And then I was oh, wow. I was on the plane and I felt absolutely sick to my stomach. And that is a long flight yeah. to be thinking about someone. Someone. Yeah. yeah it was far pretty, out. Mm. So you're back in San Fran. How long is the transition from you landing mm. to you moving to New Zealand? So the first thing I did when I landed was I called him and then okay. we, we talked on the phone for three hours. And then I was like, Respect. okay, this is a Respect. Th- I was yeah. like, this is a thing. And then we were talking on the phone every night for yeah. hours. Yeah. Just every night. And then um, I invited him to come do Christmas and New Year's with me okay. in San Francisco. Yeah. And because I was playing a lot of really awesome gigs and yeah. I could get him into, you know, mostly he did have to pay for one of them and it was an incredibly expensive ticket. I felt like in American dollars it was expensive, so I felt really really bad, but oh, it was a fortune in Kiwi. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was a um uh it was a cruise around um uh around the bay for oh, for new like years Golden and Gate it was and like, like a that. black tie yeah. like yeah. whole thing and so i was i was in the band for that and you did no comps because it's a you know it's a it's a boat it's on a, a, well, it's a black tie yeah, as well black tie, yeah yeah um so he he rocks up looking like like uh looking like james bond but sounding like belfast right you know so they're actually like sir why did you fly to new zealand to come on this boat and seriously he's like i'm dating the singer and they were like okay but they had to like check yeah, yeah you know yeah. and then they they got him this table like right next to the dance floor on right. the on the boat and he's like everybody else is in these big parties and stuff like that and he's the only person sitting like for one like on this like, fun. Yeah. Yeah, exactly and i'm wearing this like floor length black sequin gown yep. for this kind of thing and so we sing our first set and then I, I walk over to him and he's already a little bit champagne drunk but he's like i feel like james bond <laughs> like, it's <was> just <laughs> <laughs> it was really fun we had a good time we stayed up after the the boat we just walked around san francisco until like five in the morning wow. we had such good luck we were really hungry by that point we yep. were picked up by an uber and we were talking about how hungry we were, we were and the uber driver was like ah oh, um he's like i just went to go deliver a pizza and i think they'd fallen asleep so it's in the boot do you want it he just gave us a pizza like wow. we were just having a night man it was so yeah. good um and then he flew back to uh, to New Zealand. He was like, we we had decided at that point that we were gonna give it a go. Okay. And he was like, um, he's like, oh, I'll come back when I have uh, this. This was Christmas 2019. Or oh, Christmas wow. 20. Yeah, wow. Right. Wow. So well, this like real pre-COVID. Right. And real recent. Right. Okay. So then he's like, I can, he's like, my next break is in April. I'll come visit you in April. Yeah. And I was like, my next break is in February. I will come visit you in February. Right. And I got here three weeks before the COVID lockdown. Holy shit. Wow. And you're here. And I'm here. And you clearly decided, yeah, you're not going anywhere. Yeah. Well done. Very cool. Thank you. What a great story. Thanks. Man, like highs, lows. <laughs> Edge of your seat drama. <laughs> could, could have been a little bit of a path- political thriller in there, but no, it's man, really interesting. <laughs> there is some political thriller in there if you want to get down into it deeper. Uh, I did mention we, the docos. We did, yes. Oh, yeah. And now I'm in two, I'm quoted in two r- docos. Anyway, yeah. Okay, so you're here now, mm. and you've been here since like right before big first nationwide lockdown mm. what are you what are you doing with yourself now now obviously we talked at the start you had kind of rocked on in from your recording an album yes um are you still you still actively gigging and doing stuff or is the album the focus where are you sort of at now i'm gigging a lot i'm working a lot i'm doing i'm doing a lot i um I've shifted a bit in that the kind of work that i was doing you can't do here yeah sure so i've shifted my focus thankfully to my originals again um so i've been developing all of those projects and there's multiple projects so i've i've been developing the blues rock projects that's again because that's where i the tour that i came here on so that's what a lot of people knew me as was as a blues singer coming here um but my baby is this project called science for sociopaths 
Um, Love it already. Thank you. It's a great name. <laughs> Thanks. And um, it's a piano voice project. Um, okay. And uh, I write song cycles about inter, intra, and systemic abuse, essentially. Okay. Okay. So, That's where I unpack a lot of this yeah, stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like I need to charge you 160 bucks an hour. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> That's, yeah, okay, right, yes. You know, as someone who was a singer many, many oh, you know, years ago now, um, you know, writing lyrics is incredibly therapeutic. Mm. And it's a good way to get stuff out. And you, there's, I, I found there's two ways you can write. You can either write so it's like blatantly obvious. Yeah. Or so that no one has a clue. Right. But it's all open for interpretation and stuff like that. Um, and I, I think that's the really nice thing about being a, a the person that writes the lyrics and the lyricist mm. um is science going to be obvious or i think tangential? i i think it's a little i think it's a little more vague than okay. obvious right um I think if I got too specific, you know, like this song's about how my dad trained me to be a, a you know, yeah. a, a performing monkey yeah. and yeah. blah, blah, blah. This song is called Groomed. <laughs> yeah. <it's> like, <laughs> yeah. Um, but, but I write songs about that and I find that um, I used to feel really alone in my experiences. Like no one else has gone through or very few people have gone through what I've gone through. Yeah. And very yeah. few people have gone through what I've gone through specifically. Yes. But so... So, so many people have gone through manifestations. Yeah. Very, like, variations. Yes. Um, you know, and all of that sort of stuff is incredibly relatable. Right. As well, you know. And uh, I think the good thing nowadays is that um, that sort of stuff is coming more and more to light. Yes. You know, and it's becoming less tolerable, mm. which is um, excellent. Um, you know, one of the things that we do on the, the podcast is we have little uh, intro, uh, like little... Uh, commercial spots that we have kind of in the middle of them i think producer andrew uh we'll do 1737 for this one yeah yeah um 1737 are a free service um where people can uh reach out if they need counseling for depression oh. or anxiety um it's uh 24 hours a day seven days a week you can either call or text uh, it's a free service we're huge supporters of it here um so just sort of based on i guess what you're going through in your story i, I think that would be a valuable add-on I have had to call services before yeah. at uh, different at times in my life, and yeah. so I, 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 I would appreciate that. Yeah. So apart from working on the the blues project mm -hmm. and the science of um, science for sociopaths, science for sociopaths, what else is happening that we NAC and the viewers and listeners should be aware of? So I have a few exciting things in in New Zealand. A few. Uh, yeah. Share away. Well, well I'll, I'll I'll narrow it down to two. So if you want to know, I'll, I'll narrow it down to three okay. actually. So if three you want good. to know more, I'll, th then you'll be you know yes the third one. Um, but um, um, I have an album coming out for Science for Sociopaths that I've been working on since July. Well, conceptually, oh, wow. I've been working on it for three years. Okay. Um, and so I started recording it in July. I workshopped it. I, instead of um, touring music that I've already recorded and things like that, I kind of yeah. do the reverse. I do development tours. So I tour music that is in flux and I, I improvise as right. I'm performing. Okay. Yep. And I, yep. I present these shows as multimedia shows with guest artists, yep. visual artists, and with audience participation yeah and all of it informs the way that i um interpret my own songs so they're kind of shells and then i they evolve with oh, wow. other people's input yep and then over time they sort of settle yep and then as when they settle i start to uh, record them okay um so i was That'd touring cool. those for a while and then i started recording them this past july yep. and so the recording i'm actually doing all the mixing now oh now yeah Brilliant. and so it's going to be heading to the states for mastering yep. um shortly and so i'm looking at re that release for the end of the year excellent um but i'm not i'm not committing myself to any dates right it's now because i just want it to be right you know what we're mm. going to get you in yeah when it's due to be released okay. we're going to have you in again okay that'd be so but we, we love that sort of stuff when guests come back oh good yep. yeah yeah cool. <laughs> the, the follow-up exactly <laughs> yeah it's exciting. It is exciting. Um, so I, this album is particularly exciting for me. Yeah. And then um, I'll go in more into that when I come back. Yes, please do. And uh, I have a tour coming up immediately. So from March 18th to um, 
um, April 1st, I am touring the North Island to the very top of the South Island. Okay, right. The further south I'm going is Nelson. I'm doing three shows there oh, yeah, and then yeah, I'm cool. coming back up. That's a good two week tour. Yeah. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Um, and then I, and I'm actually touring three different shows. Oh, right. So, so it's not like um, Science for Sociopaths or the blues one. It it's, is Science for Sociopaths. It is. But it's different manifestations of Science for Sociopaths. Right. So I've got two song cycles that I'm okay. touring. One is the one from the album that's coming out to yes. promote the album. One of them is a new song cycle that I've written that is in its development stages. Okay, right. Yep. And one of them is um, acoustic interpretations of those songs. And then... Um, uh, covers so uh songs reimagined songs that are not in that genre yep. reimagined for right. that genre yeah sure okay yeah i see i i particularly like that sort of thing because i like taking metal and making it acoustic yes i, I find that so much fun it's very fun yep. and um i find um i like to take genres like metal yep. for example where mm -hmm. the the lyrics can be a bit obscured by the music and yes. the you know and i try to i like to put them it, when i find ones that have lyrics that i really like i put them in lyric forward settings yeah 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 mm. okay and the third one and the third thing is that i do uh well that i've come a long way and i'm doing all of this myself largely Ray. Um, thanks and i have um but I, I do have a good team of support and and friends that that pop in and help me with things and so um one of the ways that i uh, fund this is i have a patreon um so and, do we funnily yeah, enough funnily enough i know it's the way to do it <laughs> So, um, yeah, with the Patreon, um, I that's kind of my think tank. Um, yeah. I share everything that I do, same thing as I do I share on social media, but that's also where I, I um, get I input from people on, you know, I'm thinking about doing this and, and what do you yeah, think and sure, things like that. Sure. And so um, it is a, um, I mean, I'm the, the person making the decisions at the end of the day, but yep. it is kind of, it's a somewhat democratic process because I, I do feel like um, it's always greater than the sum of its parts yeah, when it definitely. comes down to it. So. And, you know, you go, oh, that's a good idea. That one, not so much. Mm. I really appreciate that feedback. Yeah. You probably need to stop trolling people. <laughs> It's all different for everyone. You're yeah. like, I'll just take your money. Yeah. Um, no, that's cool, man. That's great. Yeah. So I'm always um, looking for that kind of feedback. And it's pay what you can. And all of my services are pay what you can. Yeah. All, including my my lessons and, and things like that. So mm. I teach and I okay. do all these things. I don't believe that income should be a barrier to um, creativity, to creativity yeah, and self-development. And I feel yeah. very strongly about that. So um, I, I also do a lot of community, um, community programs and workshops and things like that. Um, I think because of everything I went through, I've I feel very strongly about developing community mm. and the how those bonds can protect people from yep. those things because I didn't have those yeah. growing up. So I feel very strongly about that. Um, so I would encourage people to come be part of my community. Um, Maggie Coco, thank you so much for coming in. This has been an absolute hoot. My pleasure. I have had a, a ball. So, um, yeah, from myself and the Northern Artist Conversation team, thank you very much. Thank you. Well, there we go, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Maggie Coco, uh, like I said, um, she was she was amazing. You know, she she gets in deep uh, about her childhood. She talks about some trauma with her with her dad. Um, you know, I and I, I got the sense that you know it would have been hard to really live through that. And you know, she's uh, she talks uh, later on about the um, science for psychopaths um or sociopaths sorry uh and using that project to kind of get some stuff out about her dad which is just amazingly cool um and then she talks about uh how she met her husband and kind of how all that uh eventuated and fell into place and and you know it's it's really cool she's had some highs and some lows but you know her journey through creativity has always been like a, a very singular focus you know if she wasn't doing music she was studying music and she just kept on at it and good for her and you know i think that it's a real testament to uh you know people that are so committed to being creative that they just go and go and go and go um and that's uh i, I will say it, hand on heart that is actually amazing and very much respect to her um i'll throw to my camera so 
Yeah, big takeaway for me is, you know, I loved the story. Um, it's, you know, I, I, there were there were a couple of points. Obviously, the story she talks about when she comes into Whangarei Clubbing, a great story. Um, and it's one of those stories where you, you kind of, you're watching or listening and you're kind of on the edge of your seat going, oh shit, what's going to happen next? I mean, I know I was. Um, but then you've also got the story where she sort of talks about uh, finding out about all the the stuff she went through with her father and you know how her dad um got her prepared for stardom um and then sort of finding out that that was all you know a bit of a lie you know that's a it's a hard hard thing to sort of live with and cope with and you know she picked herself up got on with it and just kept going and then you know that led her to ultimately whangarei which is um, cool, and now Northland is blessed to have such an incredibly talented artist, musician, you know, how lucky are we? So, if you are someone that has been enjoying our podcasts and loves them, and is super into it, um, you know, we would love you to kind of have a look at this this next piece, because it is kind of important. So, um, where can you find us, and obviously you have found us, which is great, uh, for the visuals, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube, um, please subscribe or follow us, we really would appreciate that. Um, for the audio, you can find us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Google Podcasts, Spotify, uh, and Apple and Google, please follow us as well. Um, those uh, little bit of extras, uh, they really do help us and they bump us up the uh, the rankings as well, which is cool. And if you are an artist and we haven't heard about you for some strange reason, or if um, you know someone who would be great to come in and sit in the chair next to me and just sit down and have a chat, um, get in touch with us. The email address is hello at northernartistconversation.co.nz. Nice and simple. Um, and if you're someone that would like to donate a little bit more, um, you know, you've you've gone, I'm going to subscribe to the YouTube channel, I'm going to follow them on Facebook and Instagram, and I'm going to do everything else that I need to do. And you're like, but I want to give back just a little bit more. I believe in this project. I think this project's amazing. Um, then we have a Patreon account. Now, Patreon is where you can donate Tie, uh, money essentially uh, and we have two tiers we have the first tier which is uh five bucks which is a cup of coffee um that's what we've called it um and that's cool we you know anyone that does that it's five bucks a month we would really appreciate it it really really helps us out keeps keeps all this going uh keeps it all pumping um second tier we have is uh what we have affectionately called coffee addict that's 20 bucks a month and you get a few extra perks you get the first one you get is we will tell you uh who is coming up um, so you will know in advance. And then the second one is that if you uh, have questions that you would like to ask those artists, or you'd like us to ask those artists on on, on air, um, we will do that for you. And that's kind of how it goes. We've got two patrons at the moment. Thank you very much to both of them. The first one is uh, Michael Boda. Um, thank you very much. Uh, a uh, coffee addict uh, himself. And the very first patron we ever got um, is Lauren Roach. Now, both Lauren and Michael have been on the podcast um, as well. Lauren, thank you very much for supporting us as well we genuinely do appreciate it you can find us by either going to google and going um patreon and then in the top right hand corner typing northern artist conversation or you can go www.patreon.com slash forward slash northern artists conversation nice and simple you can reach out to us either of those ways um, so yeah, that's kind of about it. I'm, I'm going to flick to my wide now, if, if that's okay. The wide shot for those of you that are watching. Um, yeah, it's been an interesting 2023 so far. Uh, we're in, we're in March and, you know, we've had some highs and lows. Um, as, as, uh, as a podcast team, we've done our best to keep things going. We have had a week, unfortunately, where Cyclone Gabriel kind of took over everything and, um, you know, the, the, most of the team were out helping, uh, either helping out friends and family or having to take care of the damage that was done to their property. So, you know, let's just, you know, you will still see us. We are still around. We're going to keep going. This thing is uh, in for the long haul. Um, I'd also like to give a very special shout out uh, to producer Andrew, editor Rocky, and comms manager Marino Bigman, as well as Cat Tasker. Um, they are the team along with myself uh we put all of these podcasts together and um you know it's it's amazing what these guys do so on that high note my name is mark kelly 
Thank you very much for watching the North and Ours Conversation. We will see you guys real soon.